Hello, and welcome to our conversation on supported decision making. Today, I will be talking with Penny Johnson, who is the program coordinator for the Center of Decision Making Support with the Arc of Tennessee. Hello, Penny. Hi. Hi, Lydia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. First, tell me about your job. Okay, as the coordinator, I'm kind of responsible for multiple projects regarding this center. First of all, I'm responsible for the website to make sure that it was developed and then also to manage it as on an ongoing basis. Um, I also kind of coordinate the overall services and I link with Disability Rights Tennessee, who is our partner and the Council on Developmental Disabilities, who is also another partner on the project. So I help organize the, the supports between different organizations to keep the project going. I, um, I run an advisory group, which are the people in the community. They can be coordinate or support workers, um, other people in the different organizations, self-advocates. Who are part of the group that help us decide what the, the center is going to do and how we're going to make how we're going to impact the community with the center and i i am the one who answers the phones and the emails of people who have questions about the center i can walk people through the website how to use the website um, explain supportive decision making and other decision making supports such as conservatorship power of attorney healthcare directive pretty much any of the information on the website i help families to understand that I can also um, provide training and education to families, to community organizations, schools, um, different uh, or groups in the community who may want to learn more about supportive decision making or other options. And then the last thing that we do is we do have sometimes when people have a difficulty with a conservatorship that they need legal help with, we can refer that to Disability Rights Tennessee and we kind of work together as a team to help get those problems resolved. Okay. So that's really great. So in plain language, what is supported decision making? Okay, supported decision making is an idea and a practice that allows individuals with disabilities to make decisions about their lives with the support of trusted friends, family, um, professionals who can help them make those decisions. Basically what that means is we all make decisions in our life. Yeah, you know, like in my case, if I have a, if I have a decision to make, I talk to my husband. He's one of my support people in my decision making. Um, I may talk to my sister about some other decisions that may be personal decisions. And when we're talking about supported decision making for an individual with disabilities, what we're talking about is they have certain people in their life that they could go to or who are there to help them make decisions. Like if they have to go to if they're going to go to college or get training, they might talk to their parents about that. They might also talk to a vocational rehabilitation counselor or a school counselor can, who can help them make those decisions. The idea behind it and the most important thing to remember is not that they are there to make the decision for you, they are there to support you in that decision. So they may show you, talk to you about different options, they may help you see things that you otherwise might not have thought about, but ultimately that decision is yours. And that's what supporting decision making, supported decision making is referring to. Awesome, that's really helpful. Can you tell me what kinds of decisions that people, decisions or choices people might need help with? Pretty much just about any decision in your life, just depending on how much help you need. Someone might need help with deciding where they want to go to college or what kind of job they want to get. Um, they might need decisions regard help with understanding like where they want to live. Do they want to live in an apartment or buy a house? Do they want roommates? Um, do they need help with other services and what those types of services are that like ECF choices or some other way or services? Or it could just be everyday decisions like um, where like going on a vacation or helping um, someone decide if they, you know, developing good relationships, people they can trust. Sometimes you may talk to a family member to help you, you know, kind of gear, is that person really, you know, a good person to have in my life? So it's pretty much any decision that you would want to make. Do I include in that circle, what we call like a circle of support? Again, it's up to the individual with a disability to decide who those people are that are important to them and people they trust. The most important thing when you're making the deciding who's going to be involved in your supportive decision-making team is picking people you trust that you know are reliable and who are there to support you to be your best in whatever you want to do. That can include parents, 
friends, teachers, a school counselor. It could be your doctor when it's medical, medical decisions. It could be some other professional, like if you get some kind of services through um, DIDD or um, some other way, support services, it could be your caseworker. It could be an ARC ad advocate. Again, each person's support team needs to be unique to what their needs are. And because it's there, because the support team is there to support them to be successful. So you get to choose who you want on your team. Tell us a, a little bit about the Life Course Exploring Decision Making Tool. The Life Course Exploring Decision Making Support Tool is a great tool to use to help you decide when you want to make decisions or how much help you need in making decisions. We actually house that tool on our website. It is from Missouri. Um, Missouri is called the Life Course Nexus, and they have a whole bunch of other tools that you can use as well in decision making. But this particular tool actually goes through and helps you determine which decisions you need to make you need to make and who you need to help you make those decisions. For example, they have what they call domains of life. Those domains can be like daily life and employment, which could be what kind of a job I want to get or um, how to manage my money. We have healthy living that talks about how to uh, manage your diet and eat healthy, how to, what kind of medications you need to take, how to take your medications. They have spiritual and social, and that can be like whether you want to go to church, um, your relationships regarding like um, getting married and things like that. Safety and security regarding what what things to put in place to make sure that you make safe choices in your life and community living, which can be like knowing how to navigate your community, like what resources you need to go to using the bus system and all those different things. And then the last one is advocacy and engagement. And then that one that is teaching you how to stand up for yourself, how to have a voice in the community and a voice regarding your choices in life. What other resources are available to help us know more about supported decision making? Are there websites or persons to contact? Uh, well, there's our website, first of all, which is the uh, Center for Decision Making Support, and that website is tndecisionmaking.org. Um, obviously, you can contact our website and we can help and talk talk someone through it, kind of explain how to use the resources and, and how to come up with a support plan. There's also Disability Rights Tennessee, who are our partners in the project, and they can provide legal advice and legal counsel regarding the more formal supports, like a conservatorship or a power of attorney or a formal decision-making agreement. Um, there's the ARC of Tennessee, who have advocates who also work with families one-on-one. -on -one. And then there's a great resource, which is a national resource, and that's called the National Resource Center for Decision Making. And they have all kinds of information from, about supported decision making across the country, where different states also do supported decision making. And then there's also the Guardianship Association, who talks about supported decision making and best practices. That sounds really great. For someone who doesn't even know about that supported decision making exists, how do my peers get to know about it for the very first time? How do we get the word out? Well, one, obviously, like I said, there's our website and we do have um, face, a Facebook and um, Twitter account where we'll also be posting it on there. We have the ARC Tennessee who we're under who is also posting information and it's on their website. We do presentations across the state. Um, we do, we are talking with the schools now to get like packets out to the schools of information about, about supported decision making and the different resources and how to get help with it. So we're trying to get the word out. And then of course, if somebody would like us to come speak to maybe their group or their family or their school, we'll be glad to do that to explain more about supported decision making and how someone can actually incorporate it in their, their programs or someone can use it in their life. Penny, thank you for taking the time today to talk with me about supported decision making. Thank you so much, Lydia. I appreciate being here and thanks for giving us a chance to share supported decision making and the center with, with your group and, and your um, audience.